All right, this video will get your your bridge into Angular Trust. So I've loaded the default um, Angular Trust model, which you should get from Canvas uh, here, um, Angular Trust Solver. So you can download the model file here. This has all the default values. <clears throat> the material properties are in there for MDF. So start with that. I always start with that file. And, and everything should work out. Um, again, if you have more than 10 nodes, uh, you'll need to use this spreadsheet here. But um, we'll get started with this uh, NGLAB Trust import. So, so I've got that model loaded. Um, I've got MDF and my straw profile. That's how you know you have that model loaded. And we're going to go over to on sh on shape, and we want we want. Um, basically want a duplicate of this original sketch which I redid for this one um, let's hide our bridge the original sketch has um, some construction lines in here that connect all the nodes well um, uh, you you Angelab trust does not like the import um, that it uses so we're going to we're gonna make a, a we're gonna make a Kind of a projection of that. So, so to project that uh, onto another sketch, we're just gonna I'm gonna show that front plane that I've been drawing everything on, and I'm just gonna make a new sketch on that front plane. Click it there, and I'm going to just simply use my line tool, and I'm gonna connect all these points together. So here we go, here we go. So I'm basically going to draw the same thing we're seeing in Angela. It makes you clip, click on every single node so you have a point at each node. Uh, when you get to the end, click there, there, and then here, and here. Okay, you have more nodes than I do, so yours will look a little different. But once you're done, you can hide that original sketch. You should just have this. Now looks like I got some extra points created which might be one of the reasons I'm having some trouble um, with the import I've been having a little bit of trouble with that um, let me just check this real quick I don't know what that is is that point um, hmm. okay I don't know what it is it might be just a artifact we're not going to worry about it for right now but you should have that general outline so what we can do here is we go to that sketch and we right click on it and we click on export as dxf dwg we want to choose dxf from this and we want to choose 2018 and just choose download and export and that's gonna save to my downloads Save it, and now I'm going to go over to NGLAB. I'm going to file. Uh, sorry, I'm going to. I have the the sample file loaded. I'm going to import DXF. Um, you can leave all those the defaults uh, checked. Browse for my file. Go to downloads, and there we go. Now there I have my my trust. Notice there's something going on here though. For some reason, it duplicates some of my nodes. I don't know why. I probably can email them to find out. But um, the way you get rid of those is just um, hover over that node until you have one of the nodes selected. Notice it's picking J, but I see E there. Well, there's a J on top of the E. So I'll right click node J, delete it. Now I see E there. We'll get this element back there later. Um, I also, now I see an I there as well. Which means there's another node on top of that E. Delete node. There we go. Now it's it's showing E, and I see E. Over here, I don't know what's showing, but we know we got to get rid of F. Um, C. There we go. Um, here it looks like I have a couple of them. I don't know why it duplicates these. I haven't quite figured out how to not how to have it not do that. So um, now to add the elements back, model. We can go to elements and notice I have my element one and two. One and two are there. So I need one from E to D. 
all I do is click on E to D, add new. And then I needed one from D to B. And I'm, again, I'm doing a smaller truss here just for um, example, but you're, you'll have more nodes than I will. Oops, I made D, B. Oh, um, did I not want to do that? Yeah, I did not want. If you create one by mistake, you can cl right click on it, delete it. I want a DB. B, B. Add new. And then I need one from DA. D, A. Add new. And I need one from BC and AC. So I'll do one from BC. Add new. And AC. Add new. There we go, got them all there. Okay, we need to uh, res restrain E and D, that's where our supports are. So we'll go to our model, pick nodes, and E has a Y constraint. Um, it's not moving in the Y. We we're leaving the X movable. It's, it's kinda is, kinda isn't, we're just leaving it. Um, we definitely don't want it, definitely does not move in the Y direction. The y is uh, y is this direction that, that we have it sitting on our force plates. C is also restrained. So once we click OK, we see these little wheels have shown up. Um, if our truss breaker was bolted together and it was somehow attached across the span by another board that locked these in place, I might say just lock them so that they're completely frozen. But that's not our situation. We our, um, the ends of our, the supports of our bridge can move a little bit. So um, now we've got to add our loads. You're going to add probably 380 Newton loads. I'm just going to add a single one in the middle here. Model, nodal loads. We want that at B. So we're going to go up here and I'm going to uh, add one at B. And FY is going to be negative. Y is positive going up. Negative. 100 newtons. Oh heck, let's just make it 200 for now. Um, you're gonna have, you need to support 240. Let's do 240, we'll see what happens. And add that, there we go. And did I put that in the X? I did. I don't want that in the X. I want that in the Y. That was supposed to be this one. B, negative Y, negative 240. There we go. And now you see it show up down there, pointing in the right direction. So there's our, our maximum bridge loading. Um, we can start learning a little bit about these members in this, this, um, this little um, window here. Uh, I've approximated the material. It's, we're calling it all MDF, even though it's paper. I don't have the exact um, material properties. At some point we can get them. But um, based on MDF, these are... I'm going to buckle at 250 newtons um, here and here, and yield means they'll fail at 290. These are all approximate. Now, notice I clicked and I created some extra nodes. You don't want that. <laughs> you want to delete those extra nodes. It'll, it won't like those. Um, I, I tend to do that sometimes. So once you have your node set, you've got your restraints, and you've got your load, we can actually go ahead and run the analysis. And it says at the bottom there, find an analysis completed in zero seconds. It ran very fast. This is a very simple project for this program. So uh, let's go ahead and view our results. Um, there's our loads. So negative 130. Um, this is compression in blue, uh, meaning the, the straw is being compressed squeezed, shortened, and then the red is means it's in tension, means being stretched, pulled apart, um, and this is showing your relative, it's kind of a bar graph showing your relative. We can also view our um, color plot showing some of the deformation. If you don't see, this doesn't look right, click zoom window, it'll zoom into that area. Again, compression is negative, tension is positive, 
and view our deformation. That's what we just saw. And free body shows everything is balanced. 240 down means 120 up on each side. That's what our force plates would read. Um, and sum of the forces is zero. Um, that should do it. Uh, you can build a bridge that um, maybe has less compression in certain areas and reinforce the areas that have more force.